Welcome to this Killick Explains Finance video. This week, another topical one. What is Facebook's new currency, as they're calling it, Libra, all about? Now, if I could tell you that right now, in summer 2019, I'd be telling a porky. We don't have all the details yet. Those are coming down the pipeline. There's regulatory negotiations going on as I speak. So anyone who says, I can tell you exactly what Libra is all about, unless they work for Facebook, is fibbing. But let's see, what are the principles? How do they think it's going to work? And what impact could this have? It's certainly creating media ripples right now and pushing the price of Bitcoin up from its recent low. So whatever it is, it's interesting. Background then is what? Facebook recently announced the planned, stress the word planned, launch of a new currency. So not quite there yet. Hopes to make it available to consumers in workable form in 2020. So watch this space if you like. It's creating a lot of excitement. It's being called lots of things, a cryptocurrency, yeah, but it's not exactly like Bitcoin, as I'll explain in a moment, that can be sent instantly with almost no fee anywhere in the world. All right. So big, bold claims being made for Libra. And people have said, what's Libra represent? Does it represent freedom, balance? Who knows? Clever name. What's it all about? So why Facebook? Well, I mean, anyone could, could, in theory, launch a new cryptocurrency, as it's being called. So basically, the firm's got roughly 2.7 billion customers already on Messenger and WhatsApp. So they've got a captive audience. They don't need to sell this thing, if you like, because they've got customers who might be ready to adopt it fairly quickly. Facebook's user subsidiary, as a technical point, Calibra, aims to build other services on top. Now, negotiation with regulators means they have to be careful about using words like this cryptocurrency could lead us into lending eventually, could lead us into investing, because that means suddenly the regulators might jump on them and say, well, in that case, it's securities and uh, banking regulations, dot, dot, dot. But nonetheless, this, some people think, is the first step of several. And they hope to see mass adoption by advertisers and commercial partners. They're hoping this thing will be swept up by their own users through or their existing infrastructure, if you like. Advertisers will jump on it for reasons I'll try and cover in a moment, and so will their commercial partners. And what's causing a lot of excitement is some of those commercial partners are big names. So, what they say. Now, it will open up secure payments, banking's part of the world that don't have it. So Facebook are coming out and saying, not only will this benefit uh, people that already interact with us, if you like, but it will also help those parts of the world that do not have banking, because it will open up the possibility of people being able to bank without a bank account in the conventional sense. Well, that argument is being debated as we speak. Other people have made the claim that they're trying to open up parts of the world that currently don't have access to banking facilities, but that is one of Facebook's marketing drives around this initiative. Micropayments, they're being called, could change the way users pay for content. This is almost like a third way, this is big picture stuff, between the current digital model, if you like. So at the moment, the model works on the basis of either you pay a subscription for stuff on a rolling basis, or you're targeted with advertising. This, details coming down the track later, probably another video, could open up a sort of third way. Micropayments targeted exactly at the content that users want on a real-time basis. Quite exciting stuff. And smart contracts eventually could drive smart technology. So for example, if you get an autonomous payment system built in. It could be you get smart cars making decisions about what the most cost-effective route they should take should be and organising the relevant payment direct through a system like this. So it has applications all over the place and people are starting to just kick the tyres in terms of what this could mean if Facebook launches successfully. How will it work? I didn't say this is a brief video, so obviously leaving lots of questions unanswered. How will it work? Roughly speaking, and we only know roughly speaking at the moment, you will buy Libra, you'll have a wallet if you like, so that sounds a bit like Bitcoin, other videos out there on that. You'll buy Libra with money, actual money, that's deposited into a bank account by creating a wallet. So unlike something like Bitcoin in some ways, if you like, this cryptocurrency is backed by amounts of, I'm going to say hard cash, amounts of cash held in bank accounts. They can be in euro, sterling, dollars, plenty of currencies will qualify. All right, the price will be linked to those deposits. So this is where it parts company with something like Bitcoin, if you like. People say, how is Bitcoin priced? Quite a good question, actually. So here, you'll have a basket of global currencies backing Libra, and there'll be a program that takes a weighted average price, depending on the volume of euros, dollars, sterling, 
at any one point in time and prices lever accordingly. So it will be linked to something that's fairly volatile, currencies, but not that volatile actually because it's going to be a basket of them and there are some big ones in the basket. So that's quite exciting because people say the problem with cryptocurrencies is price instability. Other users will accept payment instantaneously, securely and at minimal risk via what they're calling a killer app. And one of the places this will save money heavily is cross-border costs. Anyone who's tried to uh, move money from one currency to another constantly can find it quite slow and painful. There are apps that do it quite expensive. Facebook will claim to build the King Kong of these apps, if you like. So, is this just another attempt at Bitcoin? Not quite. A lot of the language being used is similar, but the actuality of it is slightly different. So, what do I mean? Supply is theoretically infinite, and there will be no need to mine. One of the things, one of the criticisms of Bitcoin, if you like, is huge amounts of effort are put into mining, solving algorithmic problems and so on, to get more tokens. That all goes, because basically, this thing, Libra, can be released just to meet demand. You know, the more people who want it, who want to swap money for Libra, fine. There's no theoretical limit on the number of tokens, as they're sometimes called elsewhere, that can be created. So that's different. Libra won't pay interest, or Bitcoin doesn't either. But the underlying deposits will for the currency's backers. So if you're thinking, well, who Facebook partnered up with to make this thing work, because it's a financial services offering of some sort, I'll give you some ideas of the names in just a moment, but essentially they will be rewarded for backing this project with interest. So you as a depositor won't get interest on your Libra, but you don't get any on your Bitcoin either, but the backers will, and that's part of the way they'll earn a return, other than the sort of marketing credibility that comes with being involved in this project. And currency backing will increase liquidity and security while reducing volatility, says the main sponsor, Facebook. All right, so the idea is that this will solve some of the criticisms being levelled at both cryptocurrencies and actual currencies. It's kind of a third way. Now, the global holy grail would be what? So, this is causing opinion to be sharply divided. There are people saying, this must be killed, if you like, this is no good. This is competition with conventional banking and so on. It's a threat to the system, it needs to be regulated. And there are others saying, this could be the future of finance. I mean, that's, that's the polarisation we've got on the debate at the moment. The global holy grail, tech companies will one day be allowed to store funds overnight at a central bank. If, now it's a big if, that is allowed to happen, then one day central banks could be right in the centre of digital currencies globally. But that's a little way in the future. And it may not ever happen. But some people are saying it's inevitable. It's just a question of when. And with Facebook in the frame, perhaps things will need to move a little quicker. Now, um, if we get to there, then costs, transaction costs and so on, will drop even further than they are at the moment. They'll have an equal footing with commercial banks. And central banks could look to actually issue their own digital currencies. So this could be a move that sees big tech companies elbow their way into banking, to put it bluntly. Now, they're not going to get there without a fight, that's for sure, but that is the scale of the potential opportunity here. Or threat, depending on how you see it. So, who's in? So people are saying, well, if it's just Facebook, that would be enough competition, but it's more than that. So Facebook's got 27 partners at the moment. I'm sure that list will grow. These include payment networks, MasterCard and Visa. Cynics would say they realise their business model could be toast one day and have jumped on the bandwagon early. But committed Librites would say, actually, no, it needs the backing of those vast payment networks to get off the ground. And on the other side, adopters, so apart from you and me going through our WhatsApp and Messenger, on the other side, Uber and eBay have signed up. What does that mean? It means they have said they will accept Libra as direct payment for stuff, essentially. And they're not the only two names on the roster. What could go wrong? So, is this a marketing pitch for Facebook? No. There are plenty of hurdles in the way, which is why Facebook are being a bit cagey about exactly how this will work and exactly where they are in the process. Trust issues with consumers, and let's face it, Facebook does have a trust issue with consumers. People ask them the question, what are they doing with my data? Goodness me, now I'm going to give them payment data on top. Is that a volume of data I want Facebook to be able to hold on my behalf? Well, that's for you to decide, if you like. Power concentration is going to stir the regulators. They're thinking, hang on a minute, 
Facebook, doing business in this, with MasterCard, with Visa, Uber, Airbnb, suddenly it all starts to look like a serious concentration of power and regulators don't tend to like that in any part of the world. So let's see how they react to this one. And a loss of control might create a central bank backlash. If this digital currency actually sits outside the matrix, as it were, in terms of central banks' ability to control currency flows, okay, then central banks may jump in and say, not so fast. And there are various ways they can do that via awkward regulatory requirements or simply saying it's not going to happen on our turf. And that's why Facebook have been keen not to define exactly what this thing is too closely. Finally, trust. All right. Does the world we live in want them to do it? as a VC fund CEO put it. So Facebook are going to have to build quite a bit of trust. Um, they're, aimed to skirt, they're aimed to skirt banking regulations, so it's backed by currency, it pays no interest, so they're hoping it won't be classified as a security, for example, time will tell, and there are information and data storage risks on top. They've got to be able to demonstrate that data is held safely. Power concentration, just to take that second point into a little bit more detail. Danger that the resulting firm is too big to fail. A limited company of 100, sorry, a limited network of 100 companies will post transactions. There'll be no full decentralization. All right. So there's another argument for saying, mm, is this actually some kind of oligopoly between big firms in the tech market? And with Visa and Mastercard on board, antitrust issues are likely. Can't say they're definite, but they're likely. And finally, loss of control. That third point I mentioned. Central banks will need to police the financial system and operate monetary policy. If this looks like a threat to that, they may try and squash it. It may affect a government's ability to limit payments and or apply sanctions. So governments are looking at this and saying, does this limit our control over our own currency flows? And widespread adoption could pose even a threat to some of the world's current weaker currencies. So it's just taking those last three points in a bit more detail. There are probably loads of questions around what I've said, and, and there are loads of questions anyway, because we don't have all the details of this project. Usual place for the ones directed at me, and there will be more videos coming down the line as the details of this big project become a little more clear.